Let's work on problem 8-2a, which is your homework problem in Chapter 8. This problem deals with various credit transactions and several things that deal with accounts receivable. Let's read the problem first. At December 31st, 2017, we have $600,000 in accounts receivable, and we have estimated that $37,000 is not going to be collected, most likely. So we call that allowance for doubtful accounts, $37,000. $600 minus $37 is the net receivables. During 2017, the company had the following transactions relating to receivables, sales on account, sales return and allowance, collection of receivables, write-off of receivables, and then recovery of receivables that we thought were going to be uncollectible. They've asked us to prepare journal entries for these five sets of transactions and asked us to omit the cost of goods sold entries. Then they've asked us for various other things that follow after we do the five journal entries. So I have set up my journal and I've set up 40 accounts, accounts receivable, allowance for doubtful account, sales, and sales return and allowance. The accounts receivable beginning balance is given to me at 600,000. It's an asset, so it has a debit balance. Allowance for doubtful account is a contra asset account with a credit balance of 37,000. My first transaction, sales on account, this is a summary transaction, which means these sales took place throughout the year. We are doing just one journal entry. Fairly straightforward, accounts receivable debit, sales credit for 2.5 million. Our customers returned inventory worth $50,000. So I need to flip this journal entry, basically because the goods have come back to me and the customers obviously will not pay me that 50,000. We never debit sales account unless we're closing it. So we have a different account called sales return and allowance that we're gonna debit. This is a contra sales or revenue account. It, the purpose is the same. Sales minus sales return and allowance gives you your net sales. So my accounts receivable, let's do the posting for these two entries. Accounts receivable, debit 2.5 million, sales credit 2.5 million. Sales return and allowance debit 50,000, accounts receivable credit 50,000. Number three, we collected $2.2 million from our customers. So we have a fairly straightforward entry, cash debit, accounts receivable credit, $2.2 million. If you notice, I've not opened a T account for cash because I don't need it for the purposes of this problem. Accounts receivable credit, $2.2 million. Write-off of accounts receivable deemed uncollectible, $41,000. I'm going to take accounts receivable off my books, $41,000. Accounts receivable has to be credit. So just like number three, I'm crediting accounts receivable. It's no longer in my books. In the ordinary course of business, accounts receivable comes off your books only when you receive cash. Anytime you take a receivable off your books, you want to make sure that this account, you monitor it closely if it's anything other than cash. So we have allowance for doubtful account, which is a contra accounts receivable account. The purpose is to reduce that account. So I'm basically saying, I don't think I'm gonna get this money. So let me go ahead and post this. Allowance for doubtful account was debited and accounts receivable was credited. Now, if you notice my allowance for doubtful account, I had 37,000, I debited 41,000. That's okay because this is an internal account. It's never dealt. No one outside of the company deals with it. I'll adjust it at the end of the year. Number five, I collected $15,000 off the receivables that I thought I'm not going to collect. Now, the journal entry has to be cash debit accounts receivable credit for $15,000. That part is easy but I'm putting that as a second journal entry over here and I'll explain why. I cannot credit accounts receivable if I don't have it in my books. If you recall, I had removed it from my books. So what I need to do before I can do this journal entry is, 
I reverse this journal entry number four for $15,000. I bring it back into my books, the accounts receivable, so that I can take it off my books, give that appropriate customer credit for making that payment. So I have accounts receivable debit, 15,000. Allowance for doubtful account credit, 15,000. Then I have cash debit, again, I don't have the cash T account, and accounts receivable credit, 15,000. So I did collect the money, but I need to bring it back into my books before I take it off my books. Okay, so those are the five journal entries they asked us to do, and we have done that. They told us no cash discount was taken. We didn't worry about cash discount. They also asked us to omit the cost of goods sold entry. Otherwise, these first two would have had that entry. Let's quickly review what that would be. The first journal entry, accounts receivable debit sales credit, would have been followed by another journal entry, cost of goods sold debit inventory credit. The second journal entry, when the customer returned goods to me, that inventory has come back to me, I would reverse that entry that I had done with the first one. It will be inventory debit cost of goods sold credit but they've asked us to omit that and not given us any information relating to the cost of the inventory. So for now, we shall not worry about it. Let's look at number uh, part B. They've asked us to calculate the balances in our account, okay? So to calculate the balance, I add the debit and I add the credit side and I take the difference from the two and my balance is $809,000 for accounts receivable and we have a check over here. Yes, in fact, that number is correct. At this point, my allowance for doubtful account, my balance is at this point of time, $11,000. 52 minus 20, 41 gives me $11,000. That's the balance I have, okay? Then they tell me to, in part C, Prepare a journal entry to record budget expense for 2017, assuming that the aging of receivables indicates estimated bad debts will be $46,000. So what they're telling me over here is that, I'm gonna highlight this for a second here. In part C, they're telling us, we think at the end of the year, $46,000 of our receivables are not gonna be collected. How much do I have in that account already? 11,000. So how much do I need to plug in in order to arrive at 46,000? I need to plug in $35,000. That's a plug number. So my journal entry over here is gonna be bad debt expense debit, allowance for doubtful accounts credit for the $35,000. So 46 was given to me. Based on aging of receivables, they told me that number should be 46. So I plug this number in over here and that's what I bring into my journal entry. Okay. The next part I've already showed you over here. We need, we've been asked to calculate the accounts receivable turnover and average collection period. Accounts receivable turnover, the, journal, the formula is fairly straightforward. Net sales divided by average accounts receivable. The net sales is Sales minus sales return and allowance. And if we had discounts, it'll be minus discounts. So that number is 2,450,000. Average receivables. Okay, so I'm going to show you the numbers. Average receivable is basically beginning plus ending divided by two. Beginning receivable. Beginning receivable is 600 minus 37. That's the net receivables. That's the beginning number. Ending receivables. Oops, just a second. My ending numbers are 809 minus 46. Okay. So let me write that over here so we can see those numbers. 600 minus 37. That's the beginning number. My ending number is 809 minus 46. 
gives me the ending number. These two numbers add them up, the net receivables, beginning plus ending net receivables, divide by two, and that's what we come up with over here. So net sales divided by average accounts receivable gives me 3.7. The receivables have turned over 3.7 times during the year. Now the question is, this is just a number. Is a, good, is a high number good or is a low number good? Well, it depends on what we're talking about. So before we get to the next one, let me just talk about the word turnover. For any business, when we're talking about the word turnover, again, we ask, have to ask ourselves a question, what are we talking about? So let's say for a business, um, you work at a restaurant and you ask uh, the owner, what's the labor turnover? And they say they have a high labor turnover. Would you want to work for that restaurant? The answer is probably no, because if they have a high turnover, people are not sticking around. So in the context of labor, a high turnover is typically not a good thing. If there's an extremely low turnover, it means people are staying there. They like the job, they're happy, lots of good things probably happening. Well, it could also be they are stuck in the job, they have nowhere else to go. Let's assume the happy situation. Things are going good. Now, accounts receivable. Would a high turnover or a low turnover be good? What is accounts receivable? Money owed to me. The faster I collect it, the happier I'm going to be as a business because I'm getting my cash. So let's take in terms of days and that'll make sense. Average collection period, 365 divided by accounts receivable turnover. 365 is the number of days in the year, accounts receivable turnover we get from the previous ratio. It's taking this company on an average almost 99 days to collect on receivables. Is it good or is it bad? Well, that depends. If my terms, credit terms are net 30, I'm asking everyone to pay me 30 days and they're taking 99 days to make the payment, that is very bad news. Now, if I was giving them on an average, let's say, 120 days to make payment, 180 days to make payment, and they're making payment in 98 days, that's really good. So these numbers, it's always in context. Ratios can be very powerful if you use them in the right context. Understand what the financial statements numbers mean, and then compare it with your own past. So let's say, for instance, Last year, I was taking, my customers were taking, on an average, 110 days to make payments. Now they're taking 98 days. Much better. Last year, they were taking 88 days. Now it's 98 days. Much worse. Okay? So you compare yourself with your own past, with your credit terms, and then compare with what others are doing in the industry. All of these will help you decide how your business is performing. So I hope this problem has kind of helped you understand some of the issues relating to accounts receivables.